let's have some beer. Oh, what? Be going down, people of the world. Thanks so much for joining me for yet another beer review. My name is Redbeard, and for the beer of the today, we have got a bottle of Cuvée René Eau de Gouze. Apparently that's how you pronounce that word. Blend 2017 by Brewery, Brewery, I don't know how to pronounce that word. Lindemann's out of, how was that word? Weizenbeek in Belgium. This is some kind of 100% Lambic beer. So I'm assuming it's on the sour side of things. So I pulled out my sour glass. This was picked up, I think I found this in Sudbury very randomly and I was like that looks pretty cool I'm gonna get that and uh yeah I was like looking into it um I'm gonna bring it up now why not Lindemann's dot de shit I'm so bad at remembering that kind of stuff it is be they've apparently won a few awards this is like how it looks when you start the page pretty cool I like it I'm assuming these are probably people that work for or founded the brewery and then if you go down those are their Lambic beers. Our Lambic beers. There's 12 different beers right there. So I'm assuming they've got a little bit of knowledge when it comes to making these kind of beers. I haven't had a lot of this style of sour beer. This is like the actual, like real authentic way to make a sour beer from what I've heard. Um, they did not make this easy to get into. Come on, tear. There we go. Uh, what was it? The uh, Rodenbach? I think I had a couple of their beers that were like really impressive, kind of actual lambic sour beers that was not supposed to go on the floor, but it did. <sighs> Whatever. I'll show you the bottle cap. 1822. I'm assuming that is when they were founded. That's a long time ago. Also has a best before date on here somewhere of November 9th, 2023. So, um, this should be okay. Let's crack it open. I was a hundred percent not expecting that. Let's, uh, make a fantastic shot and then go to where my corkscrew is. I don't know where that is. One second. It has been found. So yeah, I was not expecting that at all. A little tiny bottle like this, but it's a small cork. It's like really, really short. This is really kind of an interesting unexpected experience I'm getting right now. I like it a lot. This is, I think there might have been a beer that has been had on the channel before that had a cap over top of a cork. Usually it's one or the other. They're not generally put together. <laughs> that is just a delightful sound. Get in there, you bitch. Come on. All right, that's probably good enough. I got both of my little things I can use here. I'm not sure how poppy it's going to be. Generally, and, and if you don't have a wine opener like that, get one. I've had this thing for a long time, since my bartending slash serving days, and it is bloody glorious. I want to get the pop. So I don't want to take it all the way out. I want to like take it about that far, and then take this out, and see if we can do the pop. Although, I think a bit of pressure might have actually just been lost right there. I heard a bit of a hissing sound. Let's see though. Come on. Come on, baby. I believe in you. Maybe? Should I believe in you? Should I lose all faith? I don't know. I might. I'm not sure how much is left in there. You have a good time right now? I'm having a great time. Most entertaining beer video you've ever watched. This is, I think this is not even a go. Wow. 
That was so bad. Um, let's see what we got. Because I guess that's the only way to go. The only direction to go from here. I'm not sure about sediment in this. It seems pretty clear. And there's no, there's like zero. We'll do a swish just to see. There might be a bit in there. Not really. I just hit this with that. This glass actually feels incredibly fragile. I need to keep that in mind. Thumbnail. Turned out relatively clear, which is not coming through on the camera at all. The chill haze plus the slight haze of the beer. It's a lot of a, a lot of a, it's a much thicker profiled glass than a lot of the other ones I use. So usually light kind of makes it through better. Okay, that has got the kind of sour, funky aroma going on like mad. It smells like dirty feet or something. With like a bit of an underlying kind of maybe fruity essence. Overall, we're not going to judge this beer on its smell because sour beers... A not great smell is something that I've come to expect. And yourself, if you're watching this and you're kind of like, I don't know about sour beers, I'm wondering, I've, I've smelled them before, I've never been, I can't, they smell gross. Get past that initial aroma and give that beer at least a small try because when I first got into sour beers, same thing, I smelled it and I was like, oh, what the fuck is that? That's, oh. And then, you know, my whole thing is, whatever, I'm still going to try it because that's what I do. And I tried it and was like, are you kidding me? The smell is not indicative of the flavor whatsoever. Let's give this a small shot. I want a small shot because I don't know why. Randomly I said small shot, so I figured I'd give a small shot. That's not bad. Not really sour, more tart. Kind of just like a nice, kind of just nice fruity presence all the way, I wanna say stone fruits. I kind of, maybe like apple-y and pear-y or something. That's not bad at all. Let's do this. Cheers, everybody. I just realized, looked up randomly, I've already been recording for 10 minutes and 27 seconds. My God. This is really nice. Not, well, the bottle, I just realized that randomly. I don't know how you noticed the first time. The weight of the bottom of this bottle. You could, you could, you could kill someone with this bottle. That is a solid bottle right there. Um, since 1822, Lindemans has been making traditional lambic brewing into an art form. One of their finest products, the Old Goose Cuvée René, is the result of a three-year re-fermentation process. The wild yeasts in the air of Pi... Pajotinland? Pajotinland? Um, that might not come through. I'll see if I can get it on there and then maybe use my Vegas skills to zoom in on it. Weird place. Uh, in the air of Bovla, water malted barley wheat and aged hop flowers all contribute to the intriguing and complex palate of this noble beer. The old goose Cuvée René sparkles gold in the glass and is fragrant with aromas of sherry. Maybe? I've not smelled a lot of sherry. So this doesn't have a brood on date, but it's got the blend 2017. It's meant to be aged. And it's got the ingredients on there as well, randomly in their thing. So yeah, surprisingly, a beer from overseas that like meets my requirements when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah, they're my requirements. They don't have to be yours. I feel like they should be like 
ordained by the government, though, really. Like, wh why does beer get a pass on the ingredients thing? When every other food item that you buy has to list all the ingredients. Why beer? Like, beer, wine, hard liquor. Why? Why? I like this. And I'm going to sit down and enjoy it for a probably good long while. It's not something to be drank fast. And then I'll return. This is actually really, really tasty. It's almost gone. I'm not gonna drink that quite yet. Um, I found a, a cool little thing on the site. I brought it uh, over here. I guess I can kind of bring it up over here as well. Go to beers and gins, wasn't it? And then click on right here. How could you resist this queen of gooses in its magnificent Art Nouveau bottle? It's this old gooze or goose, I believe is a, blend, is a blend of old and young lambic matured in large oak barrels called fowders. It is then bottled in a, in a beautiful champagne bottle where a second ferma fermentation takes place. After six months, the gooza, so the goose, I keep mispronouncing that, it's the way it's spelled as opposed to the way it's pronounced. You look at it and it looks like it should be like gooza, but it's no, it's goose apparently. It obtains a golden color and is slightly carbonated and tart, but it's kept in a cellar for a few years, so it becomes truly exceptional. So, yeah. I don't know. A lot of work went into making this beer. And like I said, the smell? Kind of not appealing. But the beer itself? That's good stuff. And I almost did drink number last without doing the ratings. The only website I could find this on, where it was actually like potentially this year's wet, this year's version, but probably not, looking at it now, is on Untapped. Overall, 3.77 out of 5, with 38,924 ratings overall as I randomly yawn. Awesome timing. Yeah, it's currently 6.30 in the morning. I got home from work not too long ago, and I have not gone to bed yet. So... You know, it's still kind of the night for me. Now I drink the last. It actually looks like the clock over there. It's 6, 6.35 in the morning. This clock right there is just so passes of time. It's not that, it's never really, actually right now it's not that far off. It's about an hour off. It's almost exactly one hour off. It's not, that's funny. Anyway, Lindemann's, your Cuvée Rene Ode Goose Blend 2017 rating. That's a pretty solid nine right there. That's a really, really, really nice Lambic Sour. What is Lambic beer? Not super sour at all. Damn tasty though. I don't know that too, the cork is here, the Lindemans. Lindemans. I might keep that. I like it. Have you had this beer? Let me know in the comments down below. And if not, let me know of other Lambic Sours that maybe I can find that you want me to try. Because that's going to do it for this beer review. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, smash the thumbs up button in its face. Want to see more? Subscribe if you're not subscribed and hit the bell notification if you haven't hit the bell notification so you know when I go live and stuff like that. And I'll be back with another beer review type thing pretty soon. A Peace out! We're gonna be looking at more stuff on the beer on the website here if you go over here and scroll down. Come on, get over there, scroll down. Right here, there's a secret technique they tell you kind of the way it's done and stuff. And right here, it's Due to the second fermentation process in the bottle, its, self, its shelf life is the same as that of a good bottle of wine. Bottles can be stored in a cellar lying on their sides. After transportation, a three-day rest period will allow the yeast to settle the bottom of the bottle. This makes it possible to serve the beer without it becoming cloudy. So, I'm imagining that whole thing I did at the beginning of the video. You know, we bounced the thing. Made it more cloudy. It would have been more clear, but I don't care. I would have swished it anyway. So, yeah.
Blend 2017 by Lindemans Brewery Brewery Lindemans out of some place that I should have looked up before I started. Moron. Belgium. Out of Wiesenbeek? Wiesenbeek. Weisenbeek. 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 